some girls just want to watch World Cup. Jeff Nails another draft day. Nail this top five has 98. I got some just loves and some Kevin James. Fucking Kevin James. It's the history of bad. It's bad. It's the history of bad. It's so bad. It's the history of bad ideas. It's the history of bad. Oh, yeah. Right it's the history of bad. This episode of Hobie is sponsored by Hello Jeff. Save 20% off your first meal box with promo code HobiePod. Please note that any comments, jokes, questions, maybe, anything that we say on the History of Bad Ideas is all in good fun. And remember, we insult everybody. Our thoughts, opinions, questions, anything else, actions, that we do on the show do not reflect any of our employers, organizations, advertisers, or anyone else that is associated with the history of bad ideas. And remember, at the end of the day, it's just a joke. Welcome to the History of Bad Ideas, episode number 469. 69! Uh, mm-hmm. uh, Gronk's favorite number. I'm Jason. Beep, beep. I'm Blake. Beep, beep, beep. I'm Brian. Hey! Well, we added one more person this week from yeah. the Hobie crew. We're three fifths <laughs> of full capacity. Yes. Uh, slowly but surely, we are going to get people back. The nows are next. Mm. The nows are next. I'm um, guessing. Maybe. Are we recording next week or do we start the holiday season? Oh, no, we're recording. Mm. The, the floppy okay. awards are being, and another episode is being recorded on December 18th. Ew. Then throughout Christmas and New Year's, we'll have the recorded episode. The Floppy Awards are coming up. Uh, make sure you yeah. get your bribes in. Get yes, in. please. Uh, you can find us at Bad Ideas Podcast on Twitter. Uh, mm-hmm. Just make sure you get those in. Uh, you do not want to be late because if you want to win an f- award this year, you better mm-hmm. get some good ones in. Brian Ow <laughs> already said he might be sending us something. Oh. Um, Jeannie from Hobie might be uh, making some cheesecakes, I think, or snickerdoodles or... I don't know. She's making something that's delicious. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm just saying, there's some good competition. Uh, number one fan, Doug, he, he's delivering the mail, yeah. so that's a positive, I guess. Yeah. He always treats us well. He does. He does. He I does. still have my Christmas Pez on the table from last year. Yeah. It's a creepy Pez, but I it is a Pez. I look at it every Ugh. week. Um, please do not send us Katie Cassidy photos. We have one of those already. Yes. Um, one. We have one too many. Yeah. Ah! Unless they're bikini pics. Mm. She's in a hot Down leather outfit here with zippers. That's Black Canary. Oh. Uh, if you would like to send us some Harp Twin stuff, that would be uh, horrible. But uh, we'll can take you, it. Can you send us some of her OnlyFans from um, The Boys? The Harp Twins? No. Oh. <laughs> I don't think she was in The Boys. Talking about this lady. That's Kate? Katie Cassidy. Katie she wasn't Cass- in The Boys. Oh. <laughs> I'm thinking of somebody else. She's I'm sorry. Br- she was in Brian's favorite show. I was thinking Arrow. Of the, the Crimson. Um, You're thinking of Lori Holden. <laughs> yes, Lori Holden. Thank you. Completely, very similar too. Very similar. Uh, one. Sure. Who, I mean, they almost look the same. No, they, they look, don't. Yeah, they do. <laughs> Hot blonde chicks with masks on. No, no, no. Okay, one's in a black leather outfit. The other's in a red. Holden can act. Uh, moving on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Lori Holden was delightful at the uh, Comic Expo this she year. She was. She was great this there year. Um, Brad, uh, Brad, <laughs> I was going to say Brad did the moderating for that. Brian, uh, it's good to have you back. Have you caught up on Arrow? Uh, I'm still eight and three quarters of a season behind. Okay. Okay. Just making sure. Mm-hmm. Just making I'm tr- sure. I'm trying. <laughs> are you? <laughs> <laughs> About as much as you are, uh, trying to catch up on Jessica Jones. <sighs> I saw it on Disney Plus. It's there. Yeah, it's there. I, I didn't watch it. it. I just saw it on there. I did watch. It's there. I watched. Uh, I fa- finally finished She Hulk. My daughter and I. Oh, they, <laughs> I really liked the series. My eight-year-old daughter really liked the series, and we both did. Thinking on it, we did not like the the series, the season finale. It was good, and then she broke the fourth wall. And it was just odd. And even my daughter's like, yeah, I'm not dig- digging that at all. Yeah. Um, first eight episodes was fun. It was a sitcom. That's all it is. It's like an adventure sitcom. But the last episode, they yeah. broke the fourth wall for about 15 <clears throat> minutes. And, like, it was weird. Like, the whole season was What was she breaking the fourth wall for? 
Well, it's been weeks. So the one guy in it, mm-hmm. like, they're trying to, like, this little, these incels, basically, these, you know, 20-year-old, 20-something-year-olds are mad at She-Hulk because it's a female Hulk. So they kind of took the real-life stuff from Twitter and put it into the show, which after a certain point, I was like, it's clever. And then after a certain point, you're like, Ugh. So they're intentionally writing it to suck. No, because I... Or it, they're intentionally writing it to piss fans to off. To piss people off. There you go. So, but these people are idiots anyways. They're bitching about Hulk and everything. But anyway, so... The general no. public usually is. Yes. <laughs> no, people bitching about things on, on social the, media. On the internet. I don't, I don't believe it. But the whole series is for... Is basically they're trying to get her blood so they can become Hulks, like these 20-something-year-olds. So the leader got it, and he injects himself at this big convention, this the, little convention. The incel leader. Yeah. Hulk King. And so then it's like abominations in it and that. But then the problem is, like, he injects it, and then she's like, and then Bruce Banner comes in, and, like, all these things start going, like, it's a typical Marvel last episode, right? Yeah. Then she stops it. Stops the film, and she she's like, no, I don't want to do this. This is not, I don't want to do a typical Marvel thing. So she goes to the Marvel offices and goes okay. to see, she wants to see, she goes to the writer's room. Then yeah. she goes to, they're like, well, this is, you know, the, how we end Marvel shows. That's what everybody yeah. says. She's like, well, I don't want to do that. So then she goes to go see Kevin, and the idea is Kevin Feig. Yeah. Well, instead of Kevin, it's a AI robot that basically puts these scripts together, like these endings. Yeah. And so basically she sits down. She's like, I don't want him to have the blood. Mm -hmm. That's stupid. That's a typical thing that everyone's trying to steal power. So they they took that out. Yeah. Um, Kind of like Captain America serum. Yeah. Super soldier serum. Correct. I don't want Bruce Banner to swoop in and save the day. So he's gone. He's not in the last episode. Because, you know, that's patriarchy. And then there's um, Abomination. He should be sorry for how he's reacting. Because he spent so much time being him, like trying to be a normal human, not be the monster. So mm-hmm. they took that out. It's improper childhood conduct. Yes. So at the end, like they go back, and then she and he's like, "That's fine. You're never coming in here again. We'll do it your way. Have a good day." And then they f- go to the scene. That's what the AI says. Yeah. And then they go to that the is scene. fine. Never come back here again. We'll yes. do it your way. Yeah. She taught him a lesson. So they go back and Abomination is a human. He's being arrested. He's sorry for what he did. He's going away to jail for 10 years. I was an inappropriate child. The guy that was Hulk King, who mm-hmm. injected him, he's arrested, and he's getting sued now by, mm-hmm. uh, by her, by, yeah. uh, by She-Hulk, because of she ruined, he ruined her life, or like he exposed her life yeah. in that. But is there a progressive district attorney that doesn't put a bail on his uh, arrest and lets him run free to commit more crime? <laughs> maybe. Maybe. <laughs> It is California. Uh, anyways. Yeah, yeah, keep going. I'm sorry. And then that was it. And then she's like, yeah. well, I wouldn't like Daredevil because she's hooked up with Daredevil. So she's dating Daredevil when he shows because up. Because he's blind. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but that's it. That was it. So I'm like, you spent eight episodes get to this point, and then yeah. you're just trying to be clever and break the fourth wall. Like, I don't know. I was not. I get it was humorous, if, but if you if you don't break the fourth wall in the first eight episodes, she and then did you a do little it, bit. She did a little bit, yeah, but little not bit. that big. So it wasn't it wasn't like a kind of recurring theme, and like is there something they threw in together, and the ending just leaves you like, what the fuck? She would look at the camera like Wong yeah. from Doctor Strange would appear, appear, and she's like, oh, I guess we're having a guest star this episode. So like there was little things like that, yeah, but it wasn't like. I don't know. I, 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 I was not a fan of the last episode, if, and I, if, I, I was if, disappointed. If the writing was better, it may have been a better ending. finale episode ending. Instead of her going to the yeah. Marvel Studios to do that, yeah. they should have just done that in the series. Like, that's what they should have done. Mm-hmm. Like, he shouldn't have taken the injection or it didn't work. Hulk didn't need to be... Like, I get what she was trying to... Like, they were trying to write, but mm-hmm. it fell flat to me. So, very disappointed in the last episode. Liked the series up until that point. Yeah. So, well, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. So, but you still like it overall. Yeah, I enjoyed it. With the uh, exception of the finale. I think a lot of it was my daughter really enjoyed the series. Yeah. Um, she loved Ms. Marvel, which I loved that too. Mm-hmm. Um, or Satis- yeah. satisfaction in knowing your children are liking you yeah. know, the similar things that you do. You know. And speaking of finales, what about Andor? Did you see? No, that I haven't. I haven't. <sighs> Give me a week. Give me next <sighs> week. Did you like it? Um. Not as 
good as some of the other episodes, but I do kind of like the overall theme. Mm -hmm. I think they took a little long to develop one of the major... Twists, plots. Yeah, one of the major plot points. Mm -hmm. They, you know, they did a lot of building up to it, and you're just like, I know what's going to happen, and this something's going to happen, and they just draw it out maybe a little too long. Okay, but um, I do like the overall ending. You know, the characters and is it your favorite series so far? Still, of Star Wars. Yeah. Okay. I, I mean, outside of the original four, five, and six, mm -hmm. which you know, Star Wars, New mm -hmm. Hope, you know. Empire, Last mm -hmm. Jedi, you know, Return of the Jedi. I, I would say, you know, those three, or actually the two are up there. I mean, Return of the Jedi, as I get older, gets a little too Muppety. You know what <laughs> yeah, I mean? It gets a little Muppety. It gets a little too Muppety at times. I enjoy the last one because I like the battles. But I, yeah, I did like it in the battles and, of course, the closure mm -hmm. at the end, which is cool, you know. But um, I would which say outside, mean anything, I because guess what? He's back. Yeah, and blown his back. Yeah, exactly. Actually, Sorry, don't get me started. But uh, I would probably say then after that, after the movies, including the Han Solo story, mm -hmm. you know, Rogue One is probably the best. Yep. And then this Andor series, I, I would almost put. I would, you know, because they deal with Cassie and Andor and that whole concept of pre rebellion, and then how they perfectly segue straight into a New Hope, mm -hmm. which I thought was awesome. Yep. Um, I would put them on the same level. You know, movies, of course, Rogue One and, and series, Star Wars series. You know, like I said, I uh, Mandalorian is good. I probably would rank this above the Mandalorian. Okay. The Book of Boba Fett was Ugh. disappointing. Better than Obi-Wan. I couldn't get past episode two to Obi-Wan. He's a butcher. Yeah, he's, I, I'm going to try. I mean, I'm you know when when that drought hits, <sighs> I may try to go back and finish the Obi-Wan series. You know, I but I but I I'll tell you what I really enjoyed it, and of course, you know the ending dialogue and the last line that's spoken in the series by and uh, Cassian is mm. like, oh, that's cool. And, but you knew it was coming. Okay, I mean, you you knew it was coming, but they finally got to it and wrapped it up. I'm not kidding. Like I know you're not going to, Brian. If you watched Andor, you could watch it as a sci-fi series and not really even care about Star Wars. Yes. I, I, I feel like that is a good sci-fi series. It yeah. is it is more of a political spy thriller intrigue mm -hmm. than it is a traditional Star Wars. You know, there's no force in this. Nope. The there's no emperor. No. You know, there's there's no Jedi. Yeah. You know, there's there's no um Darths. Yeah. And but but they're mentioned. Yeah, they're, they're in play, hey. you know, but this is like you know, everything that goes into it in the beginning of the rebellion, and you have some new characters, that, you know, going in, new characters, developing plots, storylines, and having them all intertwined very well, I think was was pretty cool. And the whole symbolic, you know, uh, thing that they have is you'll get to see with uh, Cassian's adopted mother, mm -hmm. which was pretty funny because when the series ended, my wife's like, well, what about her child, her boy child? I'm like... Uh, that was Cassian. <laughs> Those were flashbacks. She's like, oh, that was him? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and remember, he has a sister. Yes. And he was looking for her, which, you know, and so it, it started off with... He went to a strip club looking for her. Yeah, went to a human tra... Yeah, well, human trafficking. Yeah. A uh, uh, galactic inter, inter trafficking yes. Galactic trafficking... Galactic brothel. Trafficking. Galactic brothel. First ever Star Wars brothel. Yeah, oh. and, and and I think it was really good. And, and like I said, I mean, there are dialogues in this series that are just fucking awesome. Yeah, I mean, really great stuff. And, you know, Luthien's, you know, you know, um, you know, not soliloquy monologue when he's talking to their deep placed spy, which I don't want to ruin it for people. Mm. And he's like, you know, and the, and the spy's like, "Hey, I want out. I got a kid now. I, you know, I'm being." He's like, "Oh no, you're. No, I'm not letting you go." Yeah. And then, you know, there's some banner back and forth, and then Luthien basically gives his monologue of why I'm doing this and what this is important. You know, the, the great talk between, you know, I, I mentioned it last week, you know, with Luthien and Saul yeah. Yeah. Guerrero, you know, like, you know, all at the end, you know, Saul's like, well, then, you know, what do you call it? Well, what do you want to call it? And he's like, well, let's call it war, you know. And the neat thing is, in the f final episode, I, I will spoil this for you, they don't show that. Because it's a whole bunch of action, you know, ooh, big booms, blast, yeah. action, blah, blah, which is which is not what the series is about. 
they show the aftermath, basically in the you know the big command room mm-hmm. center, and they talk about you know the great success it was at wiping out this um, Kier, Kiergan, Kiergan, I can't remember. Kiergan. Yeah, and um, that aftermath and how it plays out a little bit, and um, it shows. And it shows, like good. you said last week, the rebels yeah. are dirty, just as yeah. not as much as the 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 uh, yeah. empire. Well, well, Luthen is, yeah. Luthen. Well, they're yeah, they're all like, hey, what what are we going to have to do? Yeah, and you know, and realizes you know, Mon Mothra realizes she's going to have to get dirty and personally involved. And Mon Mothra, Lu- yeah, Mon Mothra. <laughs> sorry, Mon Moth- <laughs> no, you're and, right. <laughs> and you know, Luthen, you know, he he explains his role in this thing and in his monologue uh, to the deep deep spy that they have planted. And then and then you know, the the, the good thing is, is of course, you know, Cassian's mother. She's always been an anti empire thing, and yep. she basically says, "Hey, I, I don't want to give it away, but you know." You know, they give like a post soliloquy, you know, at her celebration. Kind of like if you videotaped your, well, if you're seeing this, I'm dead. Yeah. You know, and you're at the bar drinking because I paid for it, you know, or whatever. Because that's going to be me. But um, when I'm dead. But anyways, uh, when it comes down to it, uh, you know, I I love a lot of stuff into it. Especially a lot of people have fun looking at the items in Luthen's um, shop. Shop. Yeah. Because there's a lot of Star Wars stuff throughout the entire yeah. things that's in there, and people are like, "Oh my God, that's that!" And yeah, like, yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, no, I, I've definitely enjoyed it. I gotta finish it. Uh, we will. I just gotta get my mm. son to. Uh, we gotta figure out time. We've watched a lot this yeah. week. It's the longest episode. Is it? Yeah, I think not just for Andor, but for all the Star Wars. She Hulk right. was 27 minutes, and it felt like 50 at a oh point. Oh my God, <laughs> Cassian's 50 some minutes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh. And there's an end credit scene. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. You those finally see what those widgets were. It's Captain America, isn't it? No. Oh. No, you finally see what those widgets, widgets were are... that they were making on um, Kina, whatever that yeah. fucking planet was. Prison, uh, prison planet. Brian, what have you watched? Um, I watched Jennifer Lawrence's new movie on Apple. Okay. Um, Causeway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolute garbage. You should put down the uh, poster. <laughs> just the just so. You should put that in online review. <laughs> <laughs> Done. I I was interested in it, and mm. then like three quarters of the way through, I realized what was going to happen, mm-hmm. and it pissed me off so bad. <laughs> like nothing happens. <laughs> it, like. That, and I realized that, like, yeah. you know, like three quarters of the way through, and I'm like watching. I'm like, this is just gonna end, <laughs> and nothing's really gonna happen. Yeah, and it did. And I was like, motherfucker, <laughs> like this, it sucked, man. <clears throat> um, it, like she who, was. Like, who else was in the movie? Where was it about? Um, so it was her. Because I like and, me some J Law. I just watched Mother again. For the second time, a couple mm-hmm. weeks ago, uh, it's her and Brian Tyree mm-hmm. uh, from Atlanta. Yeah, and he's been in a, a ton of stuff recently. But she's uh, a former military who was involved in an IED explosion, and it's like her. The be- like the movie starts with her like coming back to where she lived and rehabbing herself and back to her hometown. Mm-hmm. And then she realizes how miserable she was, and that's joining the military was her reason to get out of there. So she was trying to get better as fast as possible so she could go back into the military. But then she, like, meets Brian Tyree's character, and they become friends, and, like, they're kind of, like, they're similar. Like, that's their common ground is, like, they're both, like, kind of miserable there. So, and, so it's not a sequel to Red, Red Sparrow. It is not. Okay. <laughs> no, okay. no, no, no. It checking. is not. Uh, but but it's sequel to Red Sparrow, by the way. Is, is she naked in this movie? Uh, no. Oh, I'm just she does like getting naked. Well, I learned her inhibitions were removed because I, I watched Mother again. Mm-hmm. And if you don't know what you're watching, it gets really crazy. And you're like, what the fuck? Yeah. Until you know, you go and read about it, or you know about it beforehand. What it, the its allegory is, and yeah, she talked about they filmed the first scene where she's getting grabbed at by all the people mm-hmm. and molested, and um, she did that with her bra on, 
and she looked at the take with uh, Darren Aronofsky, who she ended up dating, mm. by the way. So if you want to date Jennifer Lawrence, direct one of her movies, because apparently she dates each director. Oh. Yeah. It's just, just the way it is. And she's like, yeah, it's just the way it is. Okay. I got a movie to direct. By who, who directed Causeway? And she's dating them now. That's what yeah. I want to know. <laughs> you know. But <laughs> you can look that up while I talk nonsense. But she actually watched that scene and said, that's not violent enough enough for what these people are doing to me. So she's like, do it without the bra. Let's do it topless because it'd make it more graphic mm-hmm. to, for more shock value. Yeah. And it did. And you're like, oh, man, that, that was a rough scene to get through. So did and that was her idea. And because she did that, she said she was more apt to going fully naked in Red Sparrow, which I, which I thank her for. <laughs> Creepy man. Uh, I'm not creepy. I'm a man. <laughs> did anything happen? Like, so nothing really happened. Like, <laughs> like it's literally just like a like. I it's just not like a movie. Like there was just not all. I mean, there was. But did, did, there was, did she get back into the active duty stuff? No, no. <laughs> like no. Did she oh. find peace? No. <laughs> no. Did she like, find a dog? She she decides a service dog. So basically, yeah. like the whole thing is is like. She's working her way through rehab back to right. get away, to get yeah. out of yeah. her hometown where she's at. But then, like, at the end, she just sticks around for a while. <laughs> she's like, I think I'm going to I think I'm going to stay. And then it's just like screen to black. And I'm like, you know what that means? The writer's like, fuck, I don't know how to end. I this. don't know how this she stays. <laughs> Wait a minute. Do we spend an hour and a half her leaving? Nope. She'll be miserable forever. I I don't know. I was I but it you know I was I was I was sick and I needed stuff to watch and I didn't I couldn't watch any more Office. Yeah. And there's no yeah. there's no J Law boobs. And no I matters. was just like I was and I was like I was in I was like all right like this is gonna something good is yeah. coming and then I it slowly was just like nope. Um, <laughs> but I mean for an Apple movie I I expected more. Um, because most of their films are fantastic. You've liked Tulsa King, though. I have loved Tulsa King. Oh, does about Tulsa King? Have you watched King? it? I'm mafioso, eh? You need to watch it. I, I've, I've seen the interviews on him about it, but I haven't a, watched it yet. It's, I'm, it's really I'll probably give it a try. Really well done. I was, pl- I'm pleasantly surprised with it. You came over and I was watching the second oh. episode, and I told you like at first, like the first episode, I kept thinking it was going to be like Sopranos, like really intense. And there is intense moments, but like, it's a, it's funny too because he's trying to adapt after twenty five years in yeah. jail, and oh, like yeah, I'm in New York Italian, I'm yeah. in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and he goes to the the FedEx I gotta company. Gotta buy a belt buckle here. He goes to the FedEx company. And he's like, I want to ship this, and they're like twenty eight bucks. He's like, Oh yeah, I got cash. He's like, The company's like, We don't take cash. <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> What do you mean? Yeah, cash is king. Yeah, yeah. The guy's like, uh, We don't take it. So he like. Pays. Turn, pays the guy behind him to like ship his stuff, <laughs> and uh, which it's it's just a it's a, Bo- a box of money. Like is that what it he is? Was, he's mailing his kickback back to back New to- York because there's no <laughs> like he can't deposit it and like Venmo it to him. <laughs> so he's like literally filling a ki- like a mailbox like a shipping box with just money and is mailing it. And I, I will say like I love his driver in it. Yeah, his driver is hilarious. Uh, and I was like, I was telling you, like, just like the next where you're at, I think like the next part of that episode, mm-hmm. it gets, it's, it's really, really good. Um, I will say Paramount plus also released uh criminal minds evolution. Uh, um, nothing but good things about that. I've never seen criminal minds. Never. And I have to say the first two episodes, pretty darn good. Um, there is somebody from. Uh, Friday Night Lights in it. Oh, is it? Um, I don't want your life. No, that's Varsity that's Blues. Varsity Blues. Oh. Uh, is it? Um, <laughs> same dude. Yeah, same. Du- it's it's um, uh, James Vander or not uh, James Vander? Yeah, James Vander. Yeah, that one guy, Casper Van Dien. <laughs> that's who it is. Um, him and his wife were both in it, which I thought was funny. Uh, I can't. Is it Zach Guilford? I think it is. Yes. Yeah. I just read an interview with him today. Um, I've never seen the series. So there's a lot of stuff that you, like, people are like, oh, my God, this is great. But you can go into it cold, and it's really enjoyable. Um, I'm not sure if I like catching a serial killer every episode. 
Because I'm like, that's too formu- formulaic. Formulaic? Yeah, I was about to formulaic. Yeah, formulaic. Thank, you. thank you. But it makes sense because there's a whole network of these serial killers. So they're trying to piece it together. So I'm hoping like one episode they don't do that. Like yeah. I'm hoping that they, but it's, it's creepy. Um, it's good. And uh, I, I would, de- if you're a fan or even if you want to try something, I don't know you've never seen it either. I have not. And it's damn good. Um, like I said, the first episode felt like a very much like a pilot. Mm-hmm. Um, but the second episode is when it starts getting into like, oh, these guys are all connecting because they all went underground because of COVID. Nobody was leaving their houses, so they couldn't kill anyone. Mm-hmm. Uh, so then they're like, well, what do we do? So they start connecting. And then once the world starts opening up, that's when they start coming out. And basically for two years, this serial killer who's running everything has like uh, body ki- or uh, murder kits throughout the country. <laughs> and then people get like the murderers go mm. to it mm. and there's rules and all that. It's, it's phenomenal uh, in terms of that part. Like it's creepy. So it, it, it's like the, uh, the, you know, their own real life. Um, what's the uh, anti hall of justice with the bad guys, the legion, legion of doom. Yeah. yeah. There's their own legion of doom. Yes. <laughs> but instead of being like superpowers, the they legion of people. serial killers. Yes. <laughs> For two years, we were denied. <laughs> now we're back. <laughs> oh, we're coordinated. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> excuse me. I also started watching uh, another series on Apple called Echo 3. Yeah, I saw the commercials for that. Um, so that was like one of those random, like, go through Netflix, like, eh, I don't really want to watch anything on mm-hmm. here, go to here, go to here, and then just like, oh, this looks cool. Yeah. Man, is it damn good. Um, so it's about... Um, a husband and wife, and then her brother. So they're both in the same, like, special ops mm-hmm. outfit. And she's a scientist who gets kidnapped in Colombia on, like, a yeah. science, like, a ex- exploration. Mm-hmm. And the the brother and the husband go to Colombia, and, like, they're trying to get her back. Without the help of the government. Without right? the help of our, go- like, of the United States government, but... I, there's way more like at play. There's like the CIA and the Colombian military and mm-hmm. like the governments are involved that you're not like, you don't really see it, mm-hmm. but it's just, like pieces of it are there. So like we've only seen the first three episodes, but I mean, I was I have, for not knowing anything about it. Mm-hmm. So good. Better than Causeway. Yes. Mm. Uh, uh, Luke Evans is, uh, plays her brother. Yeah. Um, he's, I mean, it's it's really really well done. Um, hmm. Speaking of Apple, last thing that we watched was uh, Spirited. Ryan Reynolds, Will Ferrell. Oh, I, yeah. I've about been the meaning Christmas to watch Carol. That, yeah, it's a musical. Yeah, I did niece, not know that. My niece wanted me to watch that. You know what? I don't like the Christmas Carol because it's been played to death. Mm. This is kind of fun. They do a behind the scenes thing of like how like the uh, these ghosts like st- do a haunting of a person. So mm-hmm. every year they pick one person in the world to try to fix. And they like get together and yeah, you know, it's a company. It it's a that. company, oh, yeah. and so they get they pick one person, a human that's alive, mm-hmm. to change like they did with Ebenezer Scrooge and that. Yeah, and <laughs> they basically they are trying to find the person that can help the most people. Like when they change this person, you know, like a ripple effect. Yeah, and so Ryan Reynolds is in it, and he's the uh, guy that basically makes a social media platform. And he's, his whole goal is to make people hate each other so he can sell stuff. <laughs> like, that's mm-hmm. his whole thing. Like, basically, he, he makes money when people fight each other online. Yeah. And he makes up fake things so they, you know, like real tree versus fake tree. And that was one thing. So they picked this guy. Yeah. But it's cool because they do a whole, the whole, a lot mm-hmm. of it is just like Will Ferrell is a ghost. And he's been doing it 150 years. And he wa- works behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. And, like, they show, like, for 11 months or 12 months, they're like setting up staging and that. And obviously they're ghosts and nobody yeah. can see it except one person. So it's really clever on how they do it. Mm-hmm. Like I really enjoyed it. Uh, it's a musical. I, I'm a, I'm a sucker for a good musical. I will say the funniest part in it, they're talking about Ebenezer Scrooge and they're like, well, he did what? Like it made him better as a person. And they're like, yeah, but how long did he, like, how long did this happen, like, keep going on for, like, after he became a different person and needed help? And the guy's like, before I was like, well, probably three and a half, uh, four weeks until he died. <laughs> and they're like, what? And he's like, well, nobody lived back then. <laughs> he's, yeah. like, he's like, 
You know, number one cause of death back then, January. That's yeah. what it was. <laughs> but it was just like there's human. But it, it, I really enjoyed it. If you're, it's a whole different take on Christmas Carol. Great family. Most of the kids, uh, I think everybody liked it in our family. Um, cool. So yeah, I've really. It's on Apple, mm-hmm. and uh, I really enjoyed it. So, uh, there you go. We did thirty minutes of reviews right there. Look at us go. Yeah. Um, we did have. Uh, a couple of polls of the week this week. Uh, we had one la- last week as well, but we held off on it. Uh, let me yeah. get this here. Um, hold on. Let me see here. Oh, there we go. There we go. Okay. So we had, what is Disney's biggest dis- animated, sorry, what is Disney's biggest animated disappointment? Like biggest animated film disappointment. Because mm. Strange World, which we'll talk about later, did not do well. <laughs> we had Treasure Planet. Black Cauldron, Strange World, and Atlantis, colon, Lost Empire. I don't think I've seen any of these. Well, I have not either. I think it's interesting that three of their biggest uh, disappointments, like money-wise in that, yeah. uh, were uh, sci-fi films. Huh. Sci-fi cartoons. Yeah. Uh, in last place, Atlantis, Lost Empire, mm. Michael J. Fox. I don't think I've ever seen that one. Nope. I couldn't Honestly, even tell you what it's about other than Haven't Atlantis. heard of any I've not only not seen them, never heard of any of these. How about Treasure Planet? Have you ever heard of that? Two thousand one? No. No. Twenty three percent came in. Uh basically it's treasure uh treasure island in space. Uh mm. oh, okay. That's lost a hundred million dollars for them. Lost a hundred and something million. Uh yeah. and then when it could have told them that was a bad idea. Yes. Winning thirty six percent to thirty two percent, strange world. Beating out Black Cauldron, Strange World might lose anywhere from 120 million to 140 million. Mm. So, Black Cauldron was at uh, Snow White. No, which uh, Sleeping Beauty. That was a fantasy film. Uh, I don't even remember what it is. It's with magic. It wasn't a musical. Um, and basically, it's about a kid sorcerer, I think, and Merlin. I'm not 100. percent No, that was Sword and Stone. Uh, <laughs> No, I I don't remember ever seeing it. I remember wanting That's to see it. That's the one where um, Mickey's a wizard and he and sings. fights a dancing broom. That might be it. That yeah. might be it. Might be it. Uh, and then finally, we also had a poll from two weeks ago. Uh, what is your favorite 1980s Saturday morning cartoon? We had the oh, sm- I would have been interested in that. The Smurfs, Real Ghostbusters, Muppet Babies, and The Bugs Bunny Show. This was tough to pick, like... I went through the schedules of the Saturday morning cartoons and tried to pick yeah. out some. It, it was tough. Uh, in last place, Smurfs with 8% of the vote. Uh, Real Ghostbusters at 24%. That was one of my favorites. Yeah, I mean, you didn't even put in Thundar. No. <sighs> I'm sorry. Well, then I, I went to online and some of them are like, well, G.I. Joe. I was like, yeah, that wasn't Saturday morning. It was Saturday morning, was it? I never saw it on the schedules. Like, I yeah. looked at all three schedules, oh. like ABC, CBS, and it was on after yeah. school. What about Dungeons and Dragons? I thought about that for you. Yeah. But I don't know if it was popular enough. It was. Maybe kind of, amongst our kind families. Of. And then winning 36% to 32%, which is ridiculous, Muppet Babies beat the Bugs Bunny show. That's blasphemy. Muppet Babies suck. <sighs> Not as good as Bugs Bunny. Mm. Bugs Bunny. Yep. HBO Max has uh, the uncut version. Well, it'd be Looney Tunes. It is Looney Tunes. It yeah. is Looney Tunes. Uh, so there you go. Not Animated animals, whatever they're Animaniacs? Are. Animaniacs, yeah. Or uh, Tiny Toons? They're tiny. <clears throat> yeah, they're what tiny. about Scooby Doo? Scooby Doo uh, had a lot of different ones. I, sh- mm-hmm. I was thinking about putting them up there. I was trying to get like a different genre for each one. Yeah. I hated the Smurfs. Hong Kong Fooey. Uh Hanna Barbera? Yeah. yeah. Could have done the Gummy Bears. Gummy mm-hmm. Bears. Oh, gummy God. Bears. No. Where do they live? No. I Strawberry don't know. Shortcake. Ugh. Rainbow Bright. Was another one? Was I think He-Man? that was a commercial. Was was He Man <laughs> ever there? I don't know if that was Saturday morning. Yeah, thought, Masters of the Universe. I always watch those after school, though. That was the, my difficult part. Well, that was a syndication. Yeah. Hey, nineteen eighties. We need toys. What do you got? <laughs> Let's, yeah. GI Joe, He Man, Thundercats. Yeah. Brian, uh, any of those you liked? We'll make cars into robots. Thundercats was was pretty cool. Yeah, it was. Mm-hmm. I like that. Were you a big cartoon fan? Yeah. Uh, not really. I Girl. mean, not when I was. I don't know. Like there weren't many that I really liked when I was a kid uh, that, that like, I that I watched like 
religiously. Honestly, the the one that I can like always go back to that I watched all the time that I remember was Bobby's World. Oh yeah, I oh. love that. Yep. cartoon. Harry Mandel. Yeah, that was yeah. really good. That was that was that was funny. Did you? Was there any specific toys? Since you weren't a Star Wars fan, any specific toy line? Um, micro machines. Oh yeah, those were I, good. I had. Like damn near every micro I, machine, I had like the little like all the carrying cases mm-hmm. and like the brand like the yep. courses and all that stuff. Yep. Um, I had the little. It was like a bo- a toolbox, and you opened it up, and it had like it looked like San Francisco. Yeah, yeah, that was awesome. That was cool. Um, Before the homeless crisis. Yes. With the tents, <laughs> the head camps, <laughs> human poo. That's I mean, right. M- most of it, like. Grow like toys wise, like I didn't like I just played video games or like sports. Like I wasn't really like a big toy toy guy either. My my oldest son, who's twelve now, like growing like when he was younger, like he would sit and play with wooden trains for hours and matchbox cars and like he would play Star Wars figures and he Mm. like anything that I would like anything, superheroes and all that. And then like and we have tons of them. And then my youngest, who's now six, it's like, hey, he plays Hot Wheels, like the cars and that a lot. But, like, he doesn't really play, like, a lot of the figures. Yeah. That. Now, he is outside. Like, if he's outside, he's in, like, he loves it. Right. But he's our outside kid. But, like. Yeah, that's, I mean, we were always, like, outside playing baseball, wiffle ball, football, mm-hmm. street hockey, whatever, you know. That, it, that was. It's just kind of interesting, like, because I still, we still have these toys, and my wife's like, can we get rid of them? Can we put them in storage? <laughs> like, what are we doing? And I was like, well, he may still play. And she's like, is he? <laughs> like, I don't think, I don't think my youngest is going to be playing anymore. But that's yeah, probably also why at the age of almost 40, I started collecting Funkos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so my 12 year old just started getting into them. It's, uh, it's fun, man. So I, uh, I've got, I've, Picked up quite a few the last few months. Uh, uh, Amazon yesterday had tons, and they still do, tons of them for like five bucks. Yeah. So they're looking out there. Is that the next Beanie Baby bust? No, the Funko's been around for a long time. Um, yeah. I don't know. I don't think it's going to crash as much as the Beanie Babies, but there's definitely some that are worth some, some that aren't. Um, I don't know. I got yeah. a Black Panther over there that I'm going to hold on to. I think that's going to be worth yeah. millions. Millions. Yeah. Then the ones we give away is prizes. We do give away at the Cincinnati Comic Expo, September 22nd, uh, 22nd through 24th, 2023. Get your tickets in a couple months at CincinnatiComicExpo.com. Hobie will be there. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hayden Christensen might be there. Uh, Brad Pitt might be there. Really? Uh, Burgess Meredith might be there. He will not. Uh, <laughs> Sylvester Stallone might be there. That's very highly unlikely, but also- Bon Jovi. I hope not. Bon Jovi might be there. Impersonator. It's my life. <clears throat> uh, Tim Curry, Martin Mall. Um, <laughs> who else? Michael McKean. Yeah, all of them could be there. Mm-hmm. I don't know that, but they could. Um, who else is there? Madeline, Madeline Kahn. Kahn. Yeah. Is she still alive? I don't know. I think so. Anyways, so get your tickets in a couple months since signcomicexpo.com. Mm-hmm. Blake, let's do some news of the geek. Nope. Uh, listener feedback, Jason. Same thing. I was confused. I know I'm sitting in the wrong chair. I'm confused to begin with. You are. You're in Jeff's chair. That's right. It's a little weird. Man, it's super comfy, too. All right. You know what that sound means. It's time for the bomb listener feedback. Brought to you by the uh, elite journalists from Iran. <laughs> from the U.S.-Iran <laughs> press conference pregame. <laughs> USA, 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 USA. USA. And, uh, you know, I'll put a plug in for women's rights in Iran. They're on nine plus weeks of protest. All right. Anyways, uh, we start off with uh, from this one guy. Number one fan. Can't give yourself a nickname. Big D. A Uh, uh, Pans. There you go. Formerly known as. Uh, Seven. Dad. He always delivers because. Postman always delivers. That's right. He's the Carl Malone of the Postal Service. Yes. <laughs> it's very... He's, yeah. Is he the Kevin Costner of Postman? Postman! Mm. I could see a statue being made yeah. of Doug. 
Uh, if you see post- postal carriers out also, please be nice to them. Uh, they get shit on at this time of the year. Please be nice. Okay? Yeah, that'd the, be nice. The, they're Any del- of the delivery people. Yeah, they're delivering mail until like 9 o'clock at night. Okay? Mm-hmm. Just be nice to them. Don't or yell just at them. be fucking nice to everybody. Well, that would, be, that would take a monumental thing. I'm yeah. just trying to get help the mail po- the poster carrier carriers out right now, and don't hit their their trucks, yeah. okay? I've heard like a couple of uh, yeah because I'm a taxpayer and I don't want to pay for that. Yeah, yeah, can't rent here anymore. So there you go. Yeah, yeah the the one Amazon lady like last week, she's like, oh, this is my 638th stop of the day. I said of the day of the day. Jeezel. And I said, you know, you brought 638 smiles to people's faces. <laughs> Yeah, but now my text message my text message is blowing up because of Walmart and Target and FedEx. <laughs> your yeah. delivery's in route. And then literally, your delivery is in route. Two seconds later, your delivery has been delayed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <I'm> like what? <laughs> end of day. Yes. And the end of day comes and goes. Well, I guess not this end of day. <laughs> no. And the next day, end of day. And then, yeah. One of these days. One of these days. <laughs> uh, what do we got, Blake? He says, uh, Doug, it was great having Brian Auer on the show, finally, exclamation point. And then also Sean, period, period. (laughs) No explanation point after (laughs) Sean. And, and, you know, even though I said, fuck that guy, uh, Stork. Yes. From Besada, you know, that, that was only because... I was joking around because yes. he didn't join us. Yes. But really, I don't want to fuck that guy. Stork. He is cute. Yeah. But he says, uh, Doug says, who is the next guest? I think, I have to go back into my log here. Brian's an intern. He might know. I am not. Uh, I think it is Stephen Izzy might be coming on. I'm not sure which week, but I got to check that. Has she designed the new Hobie um, buttons that can pop out the center for cock rings? No, that she has not. I'll ask her that. Please do. Okay. Please not, do. Please do not. <laughs> it's coming, Izzy. More ways than one. Get ready. Ah, I see what I did. Have there. your canned response ready. <laughs> I did get my uh, my email from them from their latest Kickstarter of mm-hmm. uh, uh, their Gary the Unicorn. Mm-hmm. Uh, what? Uh, what? Why can't I think of the name of the Snackosaurus? Yes, that. Uh, they've got. <clears throat> new uh, new pens coming. Nice. Very excited. They're actually one of the Kickstarters that delivers on time. Yes. Go to uh, Untidy Venus. Use Hobie Pod on Etsy. I thought we weren't supposed to use Etsy. Is so, she back do, to Etsy? Yes. Yes. Okay. Use Hobie Pod. All right. Uh, and we apologize for the Hello Jeff customers. Food will be coming in two weeks. Jeff's been sick. So mm-hmm. Just leave him alone. Yeah, and there's no final care package for Jim's No Nut November. No, not not yet. Not, not yet. yet. Could be a held held over. Yeah, could maybe, be that's, a, what, that's, maybe that's why Jim's not here. Yeah, could be. He's designing the next care package. <laughs> He's counting down the days. <laughs> Two more days. How <laughs> else got? From Randall Holt at R J Holt six six six. It's not evil. Just handled that way. Is this his worst time of year for him? With all the holiness around. Yeah, especially after Halloween. Yeah. It's kind of a law. Yeah. yeah. Please explain what the 1966 Batman series writers were thinking when they had Batman challenge the Joker to a surf competition? Yes. So in the 1960s, Batman the Joker, mortal enemies, yeah. lifelong enemies, um, in the comic books for years, decades. What's a good way to do a duel? Surf competition. <laughs> Uh, the 1960s uh, Batman oh. series, a little campy. The 1966, the a little, a little, just beach a little. movies, yeah, very popular at the time. So it's surf movies, popular at the time. <laughs> beach Boys, Beach Blanket, Surfing Batman, Bing, <laughs> Blanket beach Blanket, Blanket Batman. Batman. I like it. Hey, you know they they're like, hey, what are we gonna do to rope these kids in? Let's do surfing. Surfing. <laughs> so uh, Randall go. sent me that link. It's from the 1960s. I love their, that show. But man, was was that the same uh, episode that had the shark repellent? Bat, no, that bat was a, shark repellent. That was the the Batman film from the sixties. Oh, same okay. same characters. Yeah, 
Uh, sometimes you just can't throw away. You can't find a play, uh, What is it? <laughs> Some days you just can't get rid of a bomb. That's right. Which which uh, cat cat woman was? Oh, was in the in the in show the, in the movie. There's three. Yeah. Uh, who was it? the movie? I think was Julie Newmar. Mm-hmm. Okay. I think the tr- movie was that. All right. I, ch- I think that was her. Cool. Um, but yeah, uh, what were they? What were they thinking? Uh, I think they were smoking stuff. I'm going to say in the 1960s. I uh, I mean that that was a good 15 years before I was born, so wow. I, I I missed that one. Some I saw it in syndication. Some that strange marijuana. Marijuana, you know, ruined society supposedly. No, oh, you know, maybe they're dropping acid. Yeah. This is about the time when they're expanding their brain. Does anyone ever overdose on acid? Can you? I think yes, you can. Yes. You can. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's not good. Don't try it, people. We're not condoning it. No. Not at all. Wow. Uh, from Nerdly Out Loud at Nerdly Pod, should the three six five flicks get the band back together again? No. <clears throat> Why not? Kevin's a big big time guy. Uh, he's on Nerdly Out Loud now. Oh, I see. So he's too big for he did his the Paul, old buddy. He did the Paul McCartney route. Uh-huh. He left. Mm-hmm. Um, and he just interviewed wrestling sensation. Joe Hendry last night. Really? From Impact. Mm-hmm. I believe in Joe Hendry. And oh, now wow. Kevin does too. <laughs> wow. Go check it out on YouTube. Yeah. Nerdly out loud. Maybe, maybe Kevin will, won't forget us little people. Yeah, he probably will. Yeah. He probably will. He'll probably forget us all about us. and We won't hear from him once England loses in the World Cup. He'll be gone. Well, we did tie England. We did. And a lot of we English did. people were upset about that. Yeah. Well, yeah. first time England uh, fought us and they actually didn't lose. So they good tied. job. Good job, guys. <laughs> You're making more. They didn't win either. They didn't win. It's like us in Vietnam. That's right. It was a tie. It was a tie. Ooh, they smoked your ass <laughs> real good. Yeah, it was fine. It was a tie. <laughs> ah, from Meeples and Wine at Meeples and Wine. Mm. The first ends an ampersand. Yes. Notice I picked out that fancy word. And the next is Meeple's A&D wine. All right. In case you want to spam them. Hobie, would you rather... Who? ...have backing you up in a battle against terrorists? I thought it was going to be a sex thing. All no. right. Anyway, I'm disappointed. Maybe they can send one in next week. Hobie, who would you rather have backing you up in a battle against terrorists, aliens, and or demons? Okay. John McClane from Die Hard. R.J. McReady from The Thing. Or, you know what a guy says at a time like this? Old Jack Burton says, the check is in the mail. Big trouble in Little China. I, so you're facing terrorists, aliens, and demons, say? Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm. I want to say Jack Burton. He's like magical, isn't he? He's got some magical powers. Yes. When you, when you drink the potion, yeah, and you feel a little, you know, yeah, warm and happy, tingly inside, yeah. Brian, who are you going with? Jack Burton, all day, every day, and twice on Sunday. I don't think R.J. Macaretti is really that great in the thing. I mean, he's a mm. scientist in Antarctica. Whoop de shit. Yeah. I mean, it's good for him, but it's not going to help me protect against a, a demon. No, that doesn't help. And I hear if you pay attention to the very beginning of the thing, mm-hmm. you already know it's a dog, the alien. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So it depends what version are you watching. There's like six versions. It's like... Uh, uh, it's the, like Blade Runner? Yes. It's yeah. like Blade Runner. There's like seven <laughs> different versions of the thing. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. And they're all better than the original yes. release <laughs> because the movie companies fucked it up and wanted to cut the shit out of it. It's like the uh, Ben Affleck Daredevil... The cut version yeah. was uh, the uncut version is a lot better as a Colio side story, so it's got to be uh, better. Yeah, I, I don't know. It'd be a toss up between John McClane and Jack Burton. I'm going with Brian. I'm going. I, with I think I'd have more fun with Jack Burton. Though. Yeah, and I have seen the Pork Chop Express. It's a real semi. Yes, it is. It was at Gen Con. I took pictures. If you remember. Yeah. Uh, what else you got? Yeah, because John McClane didn't have any cool cars or vehicles to drive him. All right, uh, from uh, Professor Number One and Doctor Number One. Well, before I get to that, I did see uh, where uh, Joe Lisa Sutman wanted us to try the blueberry Kit Kats. 
I think we have tried them. We have we? tried. Yeah, those. we have tried them. Yes. Yes. Uh, what was the verdict? They were fine. I, I mean, they weren't. I couldn't remember. I can't remember. We did both the strawberry mm-hmm. and the blueberry. I like the strawberry better. Mm-hmm. Neither one of them were really. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They were just there. Eh. They were better than those Oreos we had a couple weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Or what did we have? The oh. Snickerdoodle oh. Pop Tarts. That's what it was. Yeah. <laughs> no. Can we talk about Oreo not releasing some new flavors here recently? Yeah, Snickerdoodle mm-hmm. is, is is it right now. I'll be honest. They're... Did you see the MIT study about Oreos? I forwarded I it to you. I did see that. I did see that. You Please put explain. It, put that in next week. I can put that in for next week. Put that in next. I'll week. put that in next week. Yeah. yeah. I was expecting like some peppermint, maybe something mm-hmm. like that coming down the the, the line here. But uh, they, like I have not seen anything. Stick Kit Kat or Oreo or, or Oreo peppermint. I did Crunchy almost Oreo. I did almost buy the Ego flavored um, uh, Pop Tart at the store. Oh yeah. Uh, I think I might get that for next week. Ego flavored. Oh. I don't know how that's going to taste. Probably like an ego. We got Pop Tart flavored egos. Yeah, Ugh. which is kind of weird. Yes. It's got to be better than a Snickerdoodle. It's got to be better than a I mean, that's literally disaster. Just sand. Like, yeah. A, a, yeah. Um, what was it? It's it the, was a jellyfish covered in sand. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is what that was. It, it was, was awful. awful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we kept eating. <laughs> I mean, we don't waste food here. No, we don't. No, no, we don't. Uh, let's wrap this up here. Professor number one and doctor number one, when, quote, Brian, unquote, got promoted, was it really Brian, oh, getting promoted? Maybe intern Brian, still an intern. He is not. It's a good question. Hmm. Is it? It, it is, is a it good real? question. <laughs> I, don't, I don't really think that it is. Uh, Brian Al brought it last week. He brought... The knowledge. He did. He dropped some heavy truth bombs. Uh, Doug was not So happy. Sean, actually. Sean did, too. Sean did a great yeah. job. They both did a great job. It was nice to have them both on. I mean, if I were writing a question to the show, I would put an exclamation point of a mark after Sean, too. Mm-hmm. Not just a period. Like, you know, Doug, Doug, Doug did. Doug didn't like him because he made fun of Bucky's. He cut off the Bucky's ah. talk. Uh, Sean, also, the day after we recorded, it was his 50th birthday. So happy birthday, Sean. Oh, happy birthday. Good job, So we man. gave him a Hobie, Hobie party. Yeah. And we didn't know it. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, we're going to look into it when everybody's back, when the Nows are back. We're mm. going to talk about it because Brian Al may be Jack Sparrow right now as a promotion. Oh. I don't know. Brian, you might want to get your attorneys on this. Oh, they're already on it. Okay, mm. just checking. Just checking. Yeah. Mm. They're just experts in bird law. Don't get She-Hawk. I will not. They will fumble it at the mm. goal line. So... Uh, let's see. Or, or don't rely on the, a caddy for your legal advice either, as demonstrated in Seinfeld. That's right. <laughs> if the bra don't fit, <laughs> you must quit. Never put that on the person. Never put that on. She had a coat on. <laughs> she had a shirt on. <laughs> uh, let's do I think it's weird that, that, that he is doing uh, Snyder's of Hanover commercials <laughs> now. The attorney? Yeah. Oh, it's awesome. He's bringing back his um, Jackie, what was it? Jackie, Jackie Child. Johnny, Johnny Jackie Child. Child. Jackie Child. Child. Jackie Childs. Attorney at law, yeah. It's but awesome. I love it, too. I, it's just weird. Like After so many years, like, you're right. It's like who, almost... Who asked for that? <laughs> yeah, like, it's like Snyder? 25 years. <laughs> and the sad part is, as soon as I saw it, I started laughing. I'm like, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. I, yeah. It's, yeah. It's like, you know, can you get the soup Nazi in a soup commercial? Right. That's no, like, because he hates that role. Remember? Yeah. We, we covered yeah. that. He hates it. It's like... Uh, Burt Ward hated playing Robin in the 1960s Batman. Dude, you got a job. And it made you how much money? Yeah. In fame? And the professor from Gilligan's Island. Oh, I don't like it. It typecast me. Shut the hell up. You weren't doing anything else, Russell. Yeah, what else were you going to do? Yeah. Calm down. Be happy that you got a part. Hey, you made radios out of coconuts, for Christ's sake. <laughs> do it, Russell. And you got to hang out with uh, Ginger and Marianne. Mm. So shut up. And the millionaire's wife. <laughs> well, <laughs> love it. Go all the way. Love it. <laughs> they were trapped on an oh. island for a while. Everything was happening. I'm pretty sure. Um, let's do some news of the geek. Brian, get me some music. News of the geek. It's time for news of the geek. Thanks. You're welcome. Um, let's see here. This is going to be a tough one. Maharan Kari. Nope. nope. Maharan. Nope. Mehran. 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 Uh, Karimi. Karami? Mm-hmm. Karami? Mm-hmm. 
Nesseria? Nope. Nesseri. Nesseri. See, I, my ink was going out. <laughs> it wasn't in yet. Yeah, oh. blame it on the ink. <laughs> sure. <laughs> it is, it's the ink's fault. A Iranian refugee who lived for 18 years in the Charles de Gaulle airport in Paris and whose intriguing tale inspired the 2004 shitty Spielberg film, The Terminal, died last Saturday in the same airport. Cause of death was a heart attack. You know same what? airport. Did you ever get out? Uh, well, we'll get to it. Well, read. You know, when I think of a refugee, I think of Tom Hanks playing them. That <clears> sounds really good. <laughs> um, his attachment to the airport lasted until his final days. He had been staying at a nursing home this year. but returned In the airport? No, no, no. <laughs> no, oh. the nursing home was separate. Oh. But returned to the airport in mid-September to, quote, live as a homeless person in the public space of the airport. Uh, he resided... In- he resided in the airport from 1988 to 2006, initially because of legal hurdles uh, to prove his refugee status and later by choice. And because they're French. Oh, by uh-huh. the way, have you ever been to Charles de Gaulle Airport? No. no. Worst fucking airport in Europe. Oh, okay. Fucking worst. I hate it. And this guy it. chose to live there. I know. I, I, I pity this man. He lived between a pizzeria and an electronics store. <laughs> Suncoast. <laughs> It went out of business. <laughs> Planted himself on a red plastic Behind bench. Sparrow. <laughs> True <Hey>. New York pizza. <laughs> Every time I'm in New York, I always stop for an authentic piece of Sparrow. New York pizza. <laughs> Airport employees would routinely give him their meal coupons, and flight attendants would give him toiletries left over by first class passengers. Uh, I re- quote, I realize I am famous, Mr. Nasseri, nope. said in the Nasseri. article. Nasseri. I wasn't interested until I came here. Uh, let's see here. It was difficult to pin him down because of his changing claims about his origin. So he never really told the same story uh, yeah. twice. Uh, airport officials said they confirmed that he was born in Iran in the town of, I'm not even going to try it, 1945. Masjidi Suleiman. Thank you. Uh, he was expelled from his homeland for anti-government activity in 77. Believable. Uh, became a student in England. Pro- and then he had protested uh, because he protested against government. Uh, when he returned, he found himself in prison and soon exiled. Uh, oh, he's still living. He didn't have to wear a hijab. Yeah. He uh, bounced around Europe for a few years, arriving in Belgium, and then given his refugee status in 81. Traveled to Britain and France without difficulty until 88 when he arrived at Charles de Gaulle. See? See? <laughs> Shittiest fucking airport in Europe. <laughs> With a one-way ticket to London, a few clothes, about $500, and no passport. He told the authorities that his papers had been stolen at a Paris train station. Waving the usual rules, the authorities let him fly to Heathrow <laughs> in London. Welcome to the 80s. <laughs> Hell, the 90s <laughs> would have done it. No kidding. Uh, let's see here. Uh, but their British immigrant uh, immigration officials refused to let him enter the country, and he was returned to Charles de Gaulle. <laughs> oh, he's back to hell. <laughs> he could not prove who he was or offer proof of his status, so he moved into a holding area in the airport for travelers without papers. Uh, In the 90s, the French authorities insisted that he was on French soil illegally, but they could not deport him because no country would accept him. (laughs) In 19... (laughs) That's how you get through, like, the the French. Hey, we're not not taking him. Okay. In 1999, he got permission (laughs) to leave the airport and go wherever he wished in Europe. He did no longer go anywhere. Uh, The airport's medical director told the Times that year that he was scared to leave his bubble world. Uh, Basically, the story spread throughout the world. Um, he would speak uh, about the airport. His residence there appeared to depend on the kindness of strangers. Uh, people who heard his story sent him money in the mail. Like? Tulsa King. Yep. Yes. That's, uh, that's the way to do it. Traveler once gave him a sleeping bag and a camping mattress. Uh, Charles de Gaulle Airport sent a statement on Sunday that its entire staff and community had c- uh, cared for Mr. Nazari. Nasseri. Nasseri. Quote, as much as possible for many years. But the airport noted that, quote, we would have preferred that he find a real shelter as he was suffering from psychological problems. Yeah, I think. Yeah. But that's a very interesting life. Like, I try to be a hermit, but, like, that's a real hermit, mm-hmm. and that's kind of creepy. But that's not really a hermit because he's living well, amongst I guess millions so. of people. That is true. Yeah. Um, that, yeah. Do you think he had On a, a bench between Sabaro yeah. and Suncoast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or it's Julius. <laughs> Julius. Or it's French. They said he it's, would shower orange. Uh, in the bathrooms there, that they would have showers and that. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I will say Charles de Gaulle is the worst fucking airport, but European 
bathrooms in airports are a hell of a lot better than the states. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I agree with that statement. Um, so, yeah. Um, the only problem that I have with this whole story is that he, he made Spielberg make this, uh, the terminal. Fuck. He, so this guy made Spielberg make yeah. that yes. movie? Yes, yes. And I, and I love for the fact that they just let a guy stay in the airport for, for years. Yeah. And they're like, well, we wish somebody would have taken him. I was like, well, how about France? Just let him in. He's technically there anyways. Maybe it was like Les Nessman from WKRP. He just put tape around his cubicle, his house. Yeah. Can't come in. It's my property. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, that, that seems so bizarre. Like, <laughs> wouldn't just let him go? Like... There's no way that could happen and now, especially right? if you realize he had mental problems. You yeah. Know, he, put him uh, in some he, kind of hospital. He's not going to get hospital. that help at the airport. No. 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 Like, what? <laughs> he's like, declare some eminent domain. I don't know, what's, what's, I, that, what's that goofy thing those people claim? Yeah. yeah. Um, squatter's rights. Squatter's <laughs> rights. Or, yeah, what is that? The, uh, the government has no authority uh, over me. I'm a... Uh, uh, What's that called? I they, uh, sovereign, sovereign citizen. Sovereign citizen. I'm a sovereign citizen. Uh, there's squatters rights in Oregon, uh, say Washington, and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. It's unbelievable. Like if you try to like uh, foreclose on a house and somebody or you just goes try in. to evict somebody. Yeah. Oh yeah, and it's available. And somebody just walks in and plops down in there. And if they do a no trespassing or something, it takes yeah months to years to get them out. And it's that's, unbelievable. That's insane. Mm-hmm. I mean, the original intent was to protect renters from shitty landlords. Yeah. But that's where a law gets exploited to the point where, wait a minute, what is the intent? Mm-hmm. Where's the common sense that's involved in this? Mm-hmm. And, you know, as a property owner, I, the, the government should be siding with me because I pay taxes. Yeah. yeah. You know, what I mean? if I could prove that a guy didn't have a, a, a contract or a lease and he just yep. showed up and it was like, they should go remove them. Yeah. You know. Simple as that. Should be as simple as that, you know. Uh, some quickies. James Gunn has taken over DC's uh, movie studios. James Gunn and Peter Saffron. Uh, they haven't dynamic del- duo. They haven't divulged any specific plans, but they say it's all going to be connected now. Uh, they're looking towards the Star Wars type of formula, and not yeah. the Marvel formula. Well, see, step one, we're all connected. Step two, step, step th- three is profit. Profits <laughs> always profit. What's step two? Why Step are you three is profit. Pez at me. I guess I'm getting really excited for right. Brian. I threw pass. Step three is profit. But what's step two? Step three is profit. You know, step one, they're all connected. They're all connected. <laughs> um, yeah, so basically, uh, he said video games, TV shows, cartoons, movies, they're all going to be connected. Yeah, you see? The problem is, uh, I like James Gunn a lot. Problem is, um, how are you going to do this when you have already five films in the in the being made? Blue Beetle, Aquaman 2. Wonder Woman 3, in theory. Um, Flashpoint, which is the Flash film. Like, how is this all getting made? They got Batman in another universe. They don't want to do any side world uh, universes. So what are you going to do with that? So it's going to be interesting. Good luck. Yeah, just time travel. Uh, they'll just make it, and then nobody will ever get to see it. That Assholes. Release a fucking movie. Or you know what? Release the sequel to Scoob. You know, because I like Scoob, the, the movie, the cartoon. Or at least that sequel. They made it. <laughs> finished it. Sorry. Uh, and then here we go. A Florida woman is taking Kraft Heinz to task for what the attorney called false and misleading representation of their microwave Velveeta shells and cheese. Oh, you put that in here. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm doing it from the <laughs> thing. But not because of anything that's inside the single server containers. Yeah. It's due to what's on the outside. Class action lawsuit filed on November 18th in a U.S. District Court in Miami, of course, is asking the company to pay at least $5 million in punitive damages for claiming that their Velveeta-branded microwave mac and cheese cups are ready to eat in three and a half minutes. First off, they should be suing because it's not real cheese. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go with that first. Let's talk about the preservatives. <laughs> so, it... Lead plaintiff Amanda Ramirez says that's simply not the case as that time frame only factors cooking time and doesn't take into account the other steps required to prep the product before the cooking. Such as? Quote, The label does not state that the product takes three and a half minutes to cook in the microwave, which would have been true, argues a lawsuit, to provide consumers with a product that is actually ready 
in three and a half minutes. The product yeah. would need to be cooked in the microwave for less than three and a half minutes so that all the preparation steps could be completed in a three and a half minute time frame. Details, details, details. So I fucking hate it here. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> no, okay. But so why it is it why is it not Yes. But would you the, the, the steps involved that they complain about is they have to open, open the box. The... They have to peel up. Here we go, the ready? container. Yeah, here it is. Read it. Yeah, read it. Ramirez states that had she had known, had she had known, the three and a half minutes didn't include the additional steps of removing the lid. Remove the lid. And cheese sauce pouch. Yeah. Let's use cheese. Yeah, Li- cheese. A yeah, little liberal too, there. It's sauce not a sauce. Pouch. That's a powder. Sauce powder. <laughs> let's, let's, it's not like opening a, that up. It's not the shells and cheese <laughs> packet of cheese. Pouring it into the start cup. snorting it's, the cheese. It's the powder. <laughs> <laughs> like. Adding water. Oh my god! Uh, it takes so long. <laughs> oh my gosh! You gotta, you know, milk the cow for all that water. What? I don't know. I'm just fucking making shit up. And stirring in the cheese sauce. Oh, I'm stirring all oh, my hand. Oh. And it's not even a pot. It's a. It's one of the single serve. Oh, one. my elbow. She would have chosen a different product. I wouldn't have bought this product because she only has three and a half minutes to spare <laughs> in her multi. In, you know, high important, t- multitasking, super important life to spare more than three and a half minutes to make microwave mac and cheese. Kraft Heinz called the lawsuit frivolous you in think? a statement <laughs> to USA Today. Frivolous. And asserted that they will strongly defend against allegations of complaint. Ramirez and any co sorry. Uh, Ramirez and any co plaintiffs have support of an attorney who has filed over 400. Similar lawsuits. Including, jackass. That jackass should be debarred for this shit. Including a complaint against Kellogg's for mislabeling their strawberry flavored Pop Tarts, which can contain as much as which contain as much parent apple in the filling as they do strawberry. You know what you should be suing for? That fucking snickle do, snickerdoodle yeah. Pop Tarts. We should <laughs> sue them for He's that got an open and shut case right there. <laughs> yeah. uh, this is not snickerdoodle, it's sand Pop Tarts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jellyfish <laughs> sand. Uh, the attorney, Spencer Sheehan, of Great Neck, New York-based law firm Sheehan and Associates... Shitbag. Sheehan and Shitbag. Allegedly. Says that while these complaints may seem like small things to some, they Shit. are just as important as any other action someone no, might not. present to court. No, they're not, you jackass. Here we go. Oh, it gets Quote, better. Oh. Here we go. Quote. Oh, wow. Frankly, these type of cases are the only mechanism by which an individual person or consumers in general are able to say to a company, hey, this isn't right. You need to fix this. You need to disclose that this product is flavored, or this product doesn't really have butter, or that vanilla is not real vanilla, <laughs> he told the CBC. Fuck. Those may seem like small things. I admit, we're not curing cancer. <laughs> <laughs> no shit, you're not. You're, they're giving it to us. <laughs> yeah. But it is equally important to any other ca- cause of action that a court may address. Nope. Like real lawsuits that deserve attention, and instead we're taking up time for this shit. That guy should be debarred. 400, 400 plus lawsuits like this. Yes. You know, the problem is people don't know how to read a fucking ingredients panel on the back. Yeah. Nobody knows. Read what the they're fucking ingredients eating. panel. So, so you know, you'll know what you're actually eating. The biggest complaint is that she thought that she could have it ready to eat and, and be done in three and a half minutes. No, that's the microwave time, right? And this is actually the microwave time. You know, but that, you got to stir the water the, and the cheese. You know, Opening that box, jeez! It's not even. It's a, it's a single serve container. Oh my gosh! So my like my question is: is what else does does she eat <laughs> in three and a half minutes? Like everything else takes longer than that. To Bananas. Make. Like it takes longer than that to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Yeah. Well, uh, who knows? I, I mean, like bananas. She eats bananas in three and a half minutes. Try sure. to do that. Uh, I got an idea. Write a letter to the company and get a free box of mac and cheese. <laughs> you would think. And then save taxpayers Man, no. thousands of dollars. Five million dollars. Five million dollars is what she deserves. Five million dollars. Five fucking million dollars. I should sue for her for six million dollars for having to sit through that article. Could you imagine if uh, Heinz countersuits? That article lasted more than three and a half minutes. It did. <laughs> Oh, wait, who who wrote this? What article? Who was this? Uh, the kitchen. Uh, the kitchen. dot com. Yes. Oh, that, yeah. That's where I get all my news. <laughs> <laughs> it's without an e though. It's hn. dot com. Kitchen. Aww. You couldn't even spell it correctly. Kitch- because the actual it's kitchen. A, dot com was taken. By... They tried to sue for it. And they lost. <laughs> it's not the a domain parody site. No, it is not. It is not. It's real. It is a real one. 
Yeah. It's real until we're just proven. Yeah. I fucking hate it, man. Yeah, that's I right. Hate it here. I feel like I feel like you know it's a reasonable loss. <laughs> yeah, very reasonable. <laughs> yes. And finally, per WLWT.com, where Blake gets all of his news from. Yeah. Famous championship eater Joey Chestnut was in the Cincinnati area on Wednesday, last yeah. Wednesday, partnering with Frisch's local restaurant to participate in a pumpkin pie eating contest. Chestnut, who's best known for his annual Nathan's hot dog eating skills. July 4th, consumed 14 full slices of pumpkin pie in three minutes. Not full pies, just no. the slices. With Which, or without whipped cream? Without. But here's the problem. If you go online... With crust. Did he eat the crust as yeah, well? Yeah, that's part of it. All right. Here's the issue, though. Here's the issue. If you go online, I know you're going to be surprised by this. People are bitching about this guy saying he's a hack because he couldn't eat what he was trying to. Uh, let's see here. Uh, the pi- Would- pieces of pie weren't small either. Those who witnessed Chestnut's feet at the Frisch's on Wooster Pike in Fairfax uh, received a five dollar gift card if you watched him. Oh yeah, I know that. I know that Skyway. That's it's, pretty. That's, that's the, the mainliner. Yeah. That's the mainliner. Yeah. Yep. As well as a free Frisch's Santa hat. Quote at Frisch's, we love coming up with fun and exciting ways to engage our customer base. What better way to show how delicious our pumpkin pie is than by hosting a Joey Chestnut pie eating contest? By eating as much as possible <laughs> in as short a period of time. Stated James Walker, CEO of Frisch's Big Boy in a release. <laughs> Did he exceed three and a half minutes? Uh, three, no. no, it was three minutes. It was three minutes. Uh-huh. So Three minute abs. Three minute abs. Can't do three. Uh, Fourteen slices. The best is that I just love the social media going, why are we spending time on this? <laughs> Yeah, like like I was saying a couple weeks ago when I saw this and I, we first talked about it, like yeah. one of the comments, like just like reading the comments on Instagram, it's like, who cares? Though obviously you do. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like, if you didn't care, you wouldn't comment. Well, I'm commenting. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, I always like the ones, I don't know the story and I didn't read the article, but let me tell you <laughs> what I think about it. It should have been big boys he was eating. Yeah. Oh. With tartar sauce. Mm. Alternate big boys and Swiss miss. You know, if he had mac and cheese in a container, he could have done it. <laughs> uh, Brian, let's do the... Bo- you want to do box office news? I can do the box office news and world report from okay. November 25th through November 27th, 2022. So the money that we're telling you uh, is just for this weekend, but some of them that opened this weekend had a total like some more money too because of the Wednesday. They opened Wednesday. Okay. So there so there you go. All right. In first place this week, Black Panther, colon, Wakanda Forever, made $46 million for a total of $368 million on a budget of $250 million. I think it might make its money back. Seems like a success. Maybe. Uh, coming in second, Strange World <laughs> made $11.9 million in its opening weekend, a total of $18.6 million. On a budget of one hundred and thirty-five million, this will not make its money back. Mm. We saw it. You did. Yeah, we took kids because my youngest, who doesn't like many movies, he really wanted to see it, and he he sat through. It wasn't bad. Um, it wasn't like anything groundbreaking. It was a very pulp comic book type thing from the nineteen thirties and forties. Like I enjoyed that aspect of it. Um, just to let you know, there's a gay character in it. Can't. The sun is. Oh, jeez. Oh. I can't so, even imagine. No wonder they're not going to get their money. Saying. They're not going to get their money because they can't show it in China. China. So, yeah, just be careful, people. Ooh. Okay. I'm sure we'll get some protests on that. Uh, yeah. So, anyways, it was it was enjoyable. I It's a C, C plus. It's nothing bad. My wife enjoyed it. I think my kids all liked it. Um, but, yeah, I mean, there's a little twist at the end that was kind of fun. But, yeah, it was just a very... Oddly type, odd type show. Another sci-fi Disney film that did not do well. So, shocker. Yeah. Uh, coming in third, we had Glass Onion, colon, A Knives Out Mystery, made $9.4 million in its opening weekend, a total of $13.3 million on a budget of $40 million, where Netflix has paid $450 million for the rights to two sequels. Including this one. Uh, so they're, they haven't made 10% back yet. They are. It's only out for one weekend, this past weekend. It'll they, be on Netflix next, next month. Then you can stream it. So they're trying to build like, some noise for 
to, for the streaming service, and they they wanted to get it out for the Oscars. So, hmm. uh, I I mean I'm look I was I've been waiting for it, so yeah. um, I can't wait to see it. Uh, coming in fourth this week, we had Devotion made six million in its opening weekend on a let's see total of nine million on a budget of ninety million. That may not make its money back. That it doesn't seem promising. No. It said nine mil. Oh wait, there's ninety million. Sorry, ninety million dollar budget. I don't even know what that movie is. It's a airplane one. Oh, I wanted to see that. Yeah, devotion. Yeah, yeah airplane. It's, uh, Jonathan yeah, be... Majors, yeah. where it's the um, the true story of the um, black World War II pilot or Korean yes. pilot, right? Korea. Oh yeah, I think Korea. Um, um, yeah, wasn't it Korea? Yeah, I saw the previews for uh, it. Yes. I didn't know what it was it's about. It's the pair of U.S. Navy fighter pilots risk their lives during the Korean War and become some of the Navy's most celebrated wingmen. Um, you obviously were not devoted enough to see it. I honestly forgot that it that it was out, <laughs> like, already. Um, yeah, Jonathan Majors. Is you know who else did? America. America, yeah. yeah. America. All right. right, coming in fifth this week, The Menu made $5.2 million total of 18.7 million on a budget of 30 million. I want to see this. What is this about? Is it just like all the food critics come back and the chef gets revenge on them or something? I don't know if the chef is a bad guy though. It's like a, looks like a, it's a horror slasher film. Comedy. Comedy. Dark comedy. Yeah. I want to see it. It's got Anya in it. So I'm like, yeah, I, I don't get it. (laughs) I'll see it when it comes to the previews. Don't look Intriguing at all to me. It looks like something you would watch on streaming. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Sure. Like, I'm not going out of my way to pay for it. No. Um, But it looks better than Causeway. You haven't even seen the preview. I just trust you. (laughs) I mean, it's probably got uh, more action in it, at least. I... Like I said, I... Yeah. It looks enjoyable enough. Like I said, I'm not going out of my way to see it, though. Yeah. I still need to watch Nope. On uh, Paramount, uh, Paramount, huh. uh, yeah, or Peacock. Peacock, yeah. it's on. It's, so. You know, I, I still want to watch Last Night in Soho. I haven't watched that. I want to watch Bullet Train. I still yeah, yeah that. I, that's another one that I've been meaning to. Black watch. Adam. Mm-hmm. My oldest son and I want to see that, and yeah. that's on video on demand. Yeah. Um. So. Yeah. Um. What else you got? <laughs> uh, upcoming this week, December second, twenty twenty two. We've got Violent Night. I'm gonna see this. When a group of mercenaries attack the estate of a wealthy family, Santa Claus must step in <laughs> to save the day and Christmas. It looks interesting. David Harbour. David Harbour, yes. Beverly, Beverly D'Angelo. John what? Le- Beverly D'Angelo? Yeah. From vacation? Yeah. Clark. Uh, John Leguizamo. Oh, the pest. Yeah. Uh, let's see who else is in this. I didn't know those two were in it. Yeah. I think it's going to be yeah. a fun film. It reminds me of one of those films that Bill Murray uh, greenlights when he's in the movie Scrooge. Scrooge? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> this Christmas, <laughs> Santa's ready to kick some ass. <laughs> yeah, no, it, I mean, it looks pretty good. Yeah. They're expecting 8 to $10 million to cool. make. So. Speaking of also upcoming, mm-hmm. uh, the series, t- television series, Willow, yeah. Sequel to the movie Willow, mm-hmm. which uh, I'm kind of intrigued by. They said um, they had parts written for uh, Val Kilmer, oh. and they had to write it out at I the last saw minute. a headline with that. Was that because oh. of his health? Uh-huh. And his health problems? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so he, no Mad Mardigan. I, I always thought the original Willow film was slow. Mm-hmm. Like, I was not a huge fan of it. It wasn't bad. Yeah. I just wasn't <clears> a huge fan. Um... But I'm intrigued by the series. I'm intrigued. Yeah. Oh, I liked Willow. I liked his role as Mad Mardikin mm-hmm. in it. Sorsha. Hot. Yeah. Is it going to be better than uh, The Wheel of Time? I hope so. Can't be worse. Will you watch Willow? Um, I, maybe. I'll give it a try. Yeah. I still need, again, I need to watch Nope. <laughs> Let me do that first. <clears throat> Mm-hmm. Uh, this is the best time. Like it's getting cold out. Are the two little brownies going to be in it? I don't know because they were pretty funny. I, I enjoyed know. their. Could you imagine if they were their humor in it? Yeah, it'd be cool if they were. Um, everything's coming back. The Santa Claus is a TV series now. The Tim Allen. Hmm. Yeah, whatever. Uh, we watched it first episode. Anyways, uh, <laughs> yep, it was fine. Pretty much what I expected. Uh, let's see here. 
Um, it kind of felt like he was ranting about the woke cu- culture a little bit in it. And I'm like, it's a very, like, I don't care. It's but a like, very Tim Allen thing. But in a Santa Claus film, a show, like, I was like, that's a very interesting take. I mean, that's just what he does. Yep. Uh, let's see here. Um, top five this week. We had top five worst <laughs> Christmas movies. So, um, it's pretty lenient. Uh, so, um, Blake, do you want to start it off with your number five? Sure, I, I can start it off. I, I had to have watched these, you know, so I have to go with experience. I enjoyed the original Home Alone, mm-hmm. and I did have eventually watched the sequels for one reason or another. Oh, come on, do and it. they all sucked. So which one's on your list? All oh. Home Alone sequels. Number All th- number Home Alone sequel. I hope we that shit. Uh, number three for me was Home Sweet Home Alone, which was the brand new one that was on Disney Plus last year, and it was the most awful thing. Now I haven't seen that, but I'll include it. It is I'll, awful. I'll put a waiver in for it's that. It's horrible, horrible. Uh, let's see here. My number five. Well, wait a minute. You just went and said Home Alone. That was my number three. Oh, you, you put it on. Oh, the I board. got it. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, number five for me was White Christmas. Oh, my goodness. The film never ends. Fucking Danny Kay. That film is like 16 hours long. You can't stand it. It's horrible. I don't think I've seen it. I think if it was an hour and a half long, I would have been fine with it. It's like three and a half hours long. <laughs> I can't. I can't. Why? Because White. no one back then cared about it. They had nothing else to go do. Yeah. Oh, White Christmas. You know, the story of the KKK. Not that one. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Could you imagine? Back then, it probably wouldn't surprise me, but no. Dear Jesus, all I want is a white Christmas. <laughs> I don't think Jesus oh, was white. God. Shut it. Shut it, you. Eh, that one never went to production. <laughs> it was not green light by Amy Pascal. Yeah, by the time the talkies came in, you, know, you couldn't do big KK movies. <laughs> That's right. Only if they were silent. The only birth of a nation. That's right. Uh, number five for you, Brian. Uh, number five for me, Four Christmases. Oh. That's my number three. Is that Renee Zellweger? No, it's uh, Reese Witherspoon and Vince oh, Vaughn. That's who Where they're struggling to have Christmas with all of their yeah. divorced parents. Yeah, I hated it. Put it on the board. Fuck. I went to the theater going, hey, Four Christmases should be funny. <laughs> Yeah, no. not very. Vince Vaughn, mm. right? Yeah. I mean, it's got a it's got a pretty good cast. Like, yeah, Mary it's got names. Bergen, Robert Duvall, yes, Sissy Spacek, John mm. Voight, John Favreau, Tim McGraw, Kristen Chenoweth, Tim McGraw, yeah, Katie Mixon, yeah. Like, there's there's a lot, a lot of, talent of talent in that movie for it yeah. to bomb. A lot of people like that show too. I I know they do. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what's your number four? Oh, uh, yeah, it's my uh, hippie four. mom from California. It's so funny and cool. Mm. <laughs> number four for me is Christmas with the Cranks. <laughs> <laughs> is that Ben Affleck? Uh, yes. And James Gandolfini? No, that's uh, that's a different one. Okay. That it, you're thinking of... Oh, is this Jamie Lee Curtis? Uh, e- no. <laughs> what is Christmas with the Cranks? It's Tim Allen. Is it? I'm, if it's if it's the one that I'm thinking of, yeah, it's it is. It's Tim Allen and Jamie Lee Curtis. Yeah. And okay, okay. Dan Aykroyd and uh, Cheech Marin. It's just missing uh, Eddie Murphy as the young. Oh wait, hold on. That's that's uh, Trading Places. It's one of the better <laughs> Christmas movies. Yeah, it's so like the the daughter I think is like out of the country, so they're gonna skip christmas altogether i think because she's not there so they they just don't want to worry about it Mm -hmm. and then like at the very like christmas eve she just kind of shows up and like it's hijinks and sue oh this is the one that jamie lee curtis slaps her face yeah hilarity yeah uh it has a five percent rating on rotten tomatoes (laughs) wow uh yeah uh, my number four, let me get back to this. Wait a minute. Yeah. Did you give her number four? That was it. That was my number four. That was number four. Oh, okay. Sorry. Number four for me, another old time one. It's actually my oldest son's favorite film. Uh, it's a Wonderful Life. It's, it's, it's a <laughs> Wonderful Life, Jason. <laughs> He's giving me the nasty look from the green room. It's a Wonderful <laughs> Life. Uh, it's a horrible film. He hates it, too. Uh, it's horrible. I'm sorry. 
it Every goes on. It goes on forever. I yes. agree. But I like it. It's no. still okay. No, you're still stupid. But then again, that's the old way the banks used to run. Oh, look, everything still I'll worked make out. A, make a run out of that. I'll, I'll pay for it. I'll pay it right now. You are out of my own pocket. You're like, what are you doing? Every time a bell rings, an angel gets his wings. Screw you, Clarence. My dog, Blue. <laughs> <laughs> uh, go ahead. Uh, that's you, Blake. What's your number four? My number four was Serendipity. Oh. It's shocking that I would have a John Cusack mm-hmm. movie on a worst of list, being the fact that I am a fan of John Cusack. You are. Okay. And that's a Darren Aronofsky movie, by the way. Yeah, he has a lot yeah. more misses than hits, though, I think. Well, he's got some good stuff out there. He, he, he I does. like Mother. That's why I watched it again. Did you ever watch The Fountain? Don't. I have seen it, but I can't remember it. Don't. Don't. Okay, I'll skip it. Don't. Uh, what else you got? Oh, I'm back to me? Yeah, number three. For number three, that was for four Christmases. Oh, okay. You, yeah, you, you took it. Okay. No. No, Brian took it. it. Brian took it. Sorry. Yeah, that was your five. So. Uh, my number three was Home Sweet Home Alone. That piece yes. of garbage. Uh, number three for you, Brian. Uh, number three for me, uh, what you were just talking about, uh, Surviving Christmas. <laughs> okay. That was That's ben, the Affleck. ben Affleck, James Gandolfini. Oh. Um, who's the girl? It's uh, Christina Applegate. Oh, jeez. Uh, it's the millionaire that pays a family to spend Christmas with him. Mm. Jeez, old Pete. Gandolfini the millionaire? Uh. I think it's Ben Affleck. Oh, okay. Oh, sounds horrible. Great. Yeah. I just remember the trailer and it looked bad. Uh, and, you know, th- yeah, Catherine O'Hara's in it. It's, got a, it's another one of those, like, massively talented casts mm-hmm. where the movie is just terrible. I feel like there's a lot more bad Christmas films than good. Yeah. Because yeah. it's tough to make it. Yeah. Like, it's tough to make a Christmas film that's good. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's not easy, that's for sure. Uh, what's your number two? Uh, my number two would be the uh, god awful Saving Christmas with Kirk Cameron. Oh, that's an honorable mention for me. <laughs> Let's spend eighty minutes in a fucking car talking about Christmas and the meaning of it because Kirk Cameron knows I'm what sorry, Christmas I, is. I misspoke on the title. The title of the film is Kirk Cameron's <laughs> Saving Christmas. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> If you've never seen this, he film, doesn't want to mistake. He let me just anybody the, mistaken the for him may have made that. That's same right. Christmas. The plot: yes. his annual Christmas party faltering thanks to his cynical brother-in-law, mm-hmm. Christian. Kirk Cameron attempts to save the day by showing him that Jesus Christ remains a crucial component of the over-commercialized holiday. They have his real-life sister in it. I've seen this film because. I've seen it twice because I can't get over watching it. It is so bad <laughs> yes. and so misplaced. Like, I understand he ha- there's, it has a, an audience, but this is even bad for that. Yes. And, like, it is horrible. Hey, you know that Christmas tree? There's a reason why we have a Christmas tree. No, Kurt, let's not go into this. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, yeah. It literally is 40 minutes of him. I think the one review I sa- saw was... Wow, Kirk Cameron gives a PowerPoint presentation on surviving Christmas, <laughs> on Christmas and that's basically what it is. <laughs> yeah. uh, oh, let's see here. Uh, my number two. Oh, these are tough ones. This is close. How the Grinch Stole Christmas, the Jim Carrey 2000 oh, film. Oh, man, I Ooh. like that one. I don't think I've actually watched that all the way through. My kids last year watched it a couple times, yeah. and I've seen it. Uh, oh, it is so bad. Jim Carrey annoying. Yeah, and it's... Freaky and creepy. I think it was Ron Howard directed it. Yeah. Pretty sure he did. Um, and thank God Cat in the Hat came out after that. <laughs> because then the Seuss uh, 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 estate said, no more live action. <laughs> you can do animate it. We're done. Yeah. And uh, it was it was horrible. Uh, what's your number two? I b- 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 believe it. Tyler Perry's I mean, Dear <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> Hey, How do you I understand he kept making those movies because he was employing people and he's what he wanted to do. God bless him for that, but not for his Medea Christmas. He just left the own network, Oprah's network, and went to Amazon for a picture deal. Oh my, how does he get deals? Is it, wasn't he part of the Amazon's like 
the Alex Cross stuff, didn't they? Aren't they doing like a series on that? I don't think he's doing because he he's was not, Alex. He was yeah. He, he did was the movie, Alex Cross, but I don't think they're, they're not doing that. I hope not. I hope not. I for some reason I feel like I read a story that like they're they're doing like a kind of like the terminal list and yeah. Jack Ryan. They're doing like an Alex Cross thing. It makes sense. Like I used to like them until he put them out every two months, and then it came to realize that he never wrote half of them. Yeah. He just he basically gave them a synopsis and said, "Go write it," which is fine. You know, when you're that rich, who cares? But yeah. uh, what's your number one? Number one, man. I'll tell you what. I tried finding the title, but I think it's one of those Hallmark movies, and probably Brian oh, ah. knows which one I'm talking about. The reason this is the worst is because my car was taking so long to get serviced. At the dealership, <laughs> I got to watch this entire movie. Was it on your phone or on the TV there? On the TV there. Oh. You know, sitting in the little kid chair section uh-huh. because everybody else was sitting in adult chairs. And I had to watch this movie it was where they all got snowed in somewhere in New England. And it was, uh, the, there was a couple storylines where the main lady was there and her old childhood boyfriend growing up was a working class dude handyman or something and of course. she's some power ex- powerful exec lady suing, and her brother suing, was there uh, too crap. and and whatever and 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 her mom was there and she's always said you were always meant for each other and you know and they get back together and he ends up getting stuck there at the house because the roads are impassable because she, or she got stuck at his house. I guess she was driving like a Ferrari or something in the winter blizzard and then you couldn't drive the car and Whatever, and of course, at the very end, they all find love again. And did she fall in love like within three days? Well, yeah, yeah, because there was nowhere else to go. Correct. Yeah. Uh, did she? Was she an attorney suing Kraft? I can't remember. Okay. It wasn't. She wasn't suing suing Kraft for three and a half minute. She wasn't. She wasn't working at Sheehan and Company. No. Okay. So she was part of the marketing team that came up with uh, the the Kraft <laughs> three and a half minute three thing. And- She's the, yeah. the the mind behind that. I, I really think we should do this in three minutes. Can't do it in mm-hmm. three minutes. We need three and a half. Three and a half. Who would do, who'd care, mm-hmm. right? It's only 30 seconds more. What, what if what if yeah. we went four just to make no. sure? Oh, mm-hmm. That's crazy. It takes too long. Too long. Yeah. No. It's got to. you yeah. got to stir the water. Got to. Got to yeah. stir the noodle water. <laughs> and the cheese sauce. Cheese powder. Yeah. Cheese powder. Sorry. Yes, it's yeah. the powder. Um, yeah, and, I think that's what it was. He had to, like, deliver food or something. He didn't get snowed in or stuck <laughs> I can't remember. They were stuck there. And you were stuck there. Yeah, I was stuck at the dealership, too. And the worst part was I didn't find love, but my wallet got fucking emptied by several hundreds of dollars. You're married. I think you found love. Well, yeah. What is love? Well, you know Um, know what I mean. Oh, I think he's... I'm I'm just scrolling, looking at... It's okay. It's it's probably not this one. Uh, My number one is quite possibly the worst uh, Christmas film of all time. Bar none, the Polar Express. Hey, it's a 30... Freaky animation, you're right. Freaky animation. Tom Hanks is playing a homeless guy at one point, and it's freaky looking. He's on top of a train. Yeah. They're singing about hot chocolate, and at one point, uh, Steven Tyler's an elf in it. Uh, it is a horrible film. Hey, that book is 32 pages. has like 18, 18 words in it. Mm-hmm. Let's go make a movie out of it. Was yeah. it called Christmas Town? Could be. If you show me a picture of it, I may uh, be able to point. Did it have Candace Cameron Bure in it? I think so. They all do. What's the story? What's the story? Read it to read on it. On her me. way to a new job, Lauren stops in Grandin Falls where she meets and befriends a single handyman named Travis. Yes. His <laughs> his foster kid and many other locals in the weeks leading up to Christmas. Yeah, she's a snobby city type and she ends up <laughs> in the country. Yeah, it's coming back to me better she, now. Uh, Lauren back. leaves everything behind in Boston to embark on a new chapter in her life and career. But yes. an unforeseen detour to the charming town of Grandin Falls. Has her discover unexpected new chapters of heart and of family, helping her to embrace, once again, the magic of Christmas. Yes, that is right. How many... Did you find that IMDb? Yes. What's the score? It's uh, got to be like it's three. 6.7 out of 10. <laughs> How it's the hell high, is... It's higher than the Cranks movie. Oh, my movie. God. It's higher than Mother. <laughs> Mother. What the fuck? Um, Just killed a thing. Yeah. Uh, Brian, what's your number one? That was it. That was the story. Yeah. Christmas Town. Christmas Town. That's cute. Um, my number one would have to be 
Christmas Story 2. Oh. Um, I haven't seen it yet. Don't give me any spoilers. No, that's not that one. That's oh. a different one. The oh, one that okay. just came out is a Christmas story with Ralph. Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. So this the one that come that is coming out on HBO. It's actually out now. It's called A Christmas Story Christmas. And so I watched the trailer like a little behind the scenes mm-hmm. on this and it's I didn't realize it. All of the children from the original are back in for, this new one for the new one like Okay. Uh Scott Farkas, like mm-hmm. all of those that that group of kids oh, wow. are as adults now are back in this That's movie. That's funny. Um, and I thought that was really yeah. cool. Like, mm-hmm. I'm actually kind of excited to watch that. That's a deep year. dive to go get those people. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Christmas Story two. Um, it's is it a sequel to Ralphie. So it's uh, the thing is like fi- the taglines. Five years later, Ralphie has his eyes fixed on a car. But oh, trouble, wait a minute. But I've seen sure this. It's a sequel, Yeah, but, but not the one that's coming out. It's the prior no. sequel, and it didn't have the original mom and dad characters no, in it, Daniel right? Stern. Was yeah. What? Daniel Stern plays the dad. Yeah. Actually, I could um, see that, though. And then, like, some kid, can see it. Braden LaMasters, plays Ralphie. I'm not saying it's going to yeah. be good. I've, just, I've, um, I remember watching it and having to turn it off because I was so yeah, disturbed. Yeah, it was very by it. infuriating. Did he shoot anybody, his eye out? <laughs> no, but the, that's the bad thing is that it's like they're just, like, rehashing all of the, the jokes mm. from, from the, the original. original. And, like, it's so... It, and then at it, that point, you're like, why don't I just watch the original? I, I would much rather watch yeah. the original. Yeah. Like, I didn't... I wasn't watching it because, like, I knew it wasn't like a sequel, but like, I wanted because as much as I do love the first one or the original, like, uh-huh. I thought, okay, maybe, yeah, but God, the worst. Mm-hmm. Um, we did have some listener feedbacks on these. Mm-hmm. Uh, Brian, ow, ow, eliminating Hallmark from the list. White Christmas stole everything from Holiday Inn. Batman Returns. Please stop eating penguins, Oswald Cobblepot. <laughs> Christmas Vacation. Hey, these are the relatives I try to avoid. Gremlins. Pets are a commitment, not a gift. <laughs> <laughs> and a Christmas story. Should have gotten a better lamp. Wow. Ooh, those are fighting words there. Wow. I had that lamp full size, by the way. Do you? And my wife did not permit me to put it in the front window. What? Because when we were they were out for a soccer tournament, I put that light in the front window as a joke, and she came home and she was very upset with me. <laughs> so I took it into work. Then put it on your desk, <laughs> and everybody loved it. See, uh, Nisi, Indiana's favorite nurse, she had Ernest Saves Christmas. Uh, I like that film. Jack Frost, Jingle All the Way Two. Mm. Oh God, mm. A Christmas Story Two. And Krampus, don't mix my horror and Christmas, please. Uh, Stork, uh, Pittsburgh. They're, they're coming out with a Grinch horror movie, by the way. Yes, you see that? I, I put that trailer up. Yeah. It's going to be awesome. Oh, I must probably saw it. <laughs> uh, Brad and I, Brad from Cinema Guys and I, are doing a review this week mm. on our YouTube channels, and uh, it's the Killing Tree about the tree that com- Christmas tree that comes to life and kills people. It was an hour and ten minutes. The film. It eats film. ornaments and cats. Uh, kills people. Oh. It's a serial killer that gets his soul sucked into a Christmas tree. It's amazing. Okay. My At one point, my wife's like, what the hell are you watching? Why are you still watching this? Sounds great. Uh, let's see here. Story. I bet it still scores higher than uh, <laughs> Christmas, Christmas Town. Town. <laughs> I, I don't know. 6.7 out of 10 on that IMDb. That is pretty is good. Pretty I, don't, I don't understand how it could get rated that high. Uh, Stork, Pittsburgh's sexiest podcaster, has Batman Returns, Lethal Weapon, Gremlins, Die Hard 2 and Die Hard, mostly because they're not Christmas movies. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, at Everything I Learned from Movies, had uh, every Hallmark movie, Jingle All the Way. That's like 50. Yes. That's, that's a mega this hobie. Week. This week. Oh, my God. Uh, Jack Frost with Michael Keaton. So bad. Christmas with the Cranks. And number one, Kirk Cameron Saving Christmas. Yeah. I have uh, heard a couple of jingle all the way is mentioned. That was my honorable mention was the one and two of jingle all the way. I like that they made a sequel. <laughs> Keep jingling. Yeah. That would have been the better, <laughs> the better title. Uh, bad idea of the week. Uh, number 1501. 
uh, suing Kraft Mac and Cheese. Uh, Kraft, uh, for, for Kraft taking, and Heinz. For microwave mac and cheese yes. taking too long. Yes. <laughs> Stop it. You can't, Stop it. You can't misrepresent the, the mac and cheese. I, I, you just can't. I have to stir the cheese powder. You know, this is America. This is going to open the door to copycat lawsuits because anything that says instant mix, people are going to complain because it's not instant. Yeah. Like instant mashed potatoes. That's right. When you open the box, it's, not instant. it's still powder. Yeah. I have to stir water in them. I no, That's the, right. The box Sometimes, says instant, no. and I opened it, and I'm eating dirt. Sometimes mm. milk, I have to add. That's ridiculous. Mm. ridiculous. Yeah. But you know what? If we, if we don't stand up now, <laughs> we'll never, Who's ever. going to stand up for the little people? That's right. That's right. Yes, we're we're just going to continuously be run over by these gigantic corporations if we don't stand up now. It is. I have nothing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, so Christmas Town, uh, it doesn't have any tomatoes on the tomato meter, so I don't know what what that means. But it it uh, also has a sixty seven percent audience score on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, so. Good for that. Uh, maybe I, maybe it's just a negative association. Maybe. Maybe I would have enjoyed it more if I was at home with my instant cocoa. But not your tra- Kraft Mac and Cheese. But not my Kraft Mac and Cheese. Uh, titles for the show. I had Beach Blanket Batman. Yep. Uh, not curing, I'm not curing cancer. Yep. <laughs> um, finding love at a dealership. And my dog, Blue. Just because I like Blake's impression of that. My dog blue. <laughs> uh, I also had Beach Blanket Batman mm-hmm. and uh, Blame It on the Ink. Oh. Like Blame that. it on the ink. Yes. Anything well, else? No, those are the only two that, wow. I, that I wrote down. Wow. Um, I guess Beach Blanket Batman. Batman. Let's do um, it. It's probably going to win. Yeah. I mean, I feel bad blaming your speech impediment on printer ink, so... You like the ink. <laughs> it is. Look. Look. See? Look at the story. I couldn't read because of that. Or, yeah. just, or just, let's just title it Charles de Gaulle Airport Sucks. <laughs> it's the silent killer. Is this a... <laughs> <laughs> Fine. Silent killer it is. <laughs> Charles de Gaulle Airport is the silent killer. It's a little wordy, but it's still pretty good. Yeah, we'll get Charles sued. de Gaulle, the silent killer. We we'll get sued by the French. Yeah, Minist- let's not do that. Minist- let's just do the silent killer. Ministry. I'm just doing the sign because what thinks who thinks of Christmas and thinks doesn't think Silent Killer. Let's do it. Uh, it's a I gassy d- episode. Ah. Roger says goodbye. Goodbye. Listen and tell Hobie.